Similarities between traditional African view of evil and biblical concept of sin. Well? You won't believe this. Believe what? My dad says that he came in, but we were so involved in our conversation that we never noticed him. So he decided to leave us alone. Oh my, I didn't see him. Neither did I. The good news is, he has decided to prepare lunch for us as we continue talking. My mother has gone out. Hmm, sounds good. Since we started talking about sin, mm -hmm. and evil for that matter, I have come to realize that there are some similarities as well as differences between the African traditional concept of evil and the biblical concept of sin. Hmm. That's a nice observation. Mm -hmm. And that is precisely what I wanted us to talk about. Now, where should we begin? Well, the similarities. I have so many in mind. Let's hear them. Well, in both the Bible and the African stories, mm. God is acknowledged as a supreme being and he is good. His intention for mankind right from the beginning was good. That's right. He is not the author of evil. Rather, evil comes from external forces. In the Bible, these external forces are represented by the serpent. In traditional African communities, these external forces are represented by... Let me tell you that. Mm -hmm. It is represented by malicious ancestral spirits, witches, sorcerers, and evil spirits. Correct. Secondly, sin and evil are viewed to be arising from human beings' disobedience, greed, and selfishness. Can you explain further? Mm, I can try. Mm -hmm. Because Adam and Eve disobeyed God and ate from the tree of life, they sinned and had to be driven away from God. Cain's anger made him to kill his brother Abel, and God had to destroy the world with flood when human wickedness became too much. Beautiful. In the traditional African settings, we learn that causes of evil are things like breaking of taboos, evil people in the society, curses from elderly people, and so on. As you can see, it is the very human beings that cause evil. That is excellent. Thank you. Still talking about curses, mm -hmm. I noticed that both concepts view evil as to have come from curses. I'm listening. Adam and Eve were cursed because they betrayed God. The ground was cursed as well as the serpent. Because of this, misfortunes follow them even as they go out of the Garden of Eden to start a new life. These misfortunes even follow their offspring. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, we are told that curses from parents or older members of the society could bring evil as well. So you can see, mm -hmm. the issue of curses is shared. True. Next, both concepts agree that evil has consequences. These consequences are hardships, misfortunes, as well as death. I feel like you still have more to say. Of course I do. Adam and Eve are sent out of the Garden of Eden. They now have to work the ground for it to bear fruits. Pain during child labor is introduced, and after all these sufferings, mm. they would die at the end to return to the very ground. Mm -hmm. In the traditional African aspect, we are told that the consequences of evil is suffering for the individual and the relationship between the individual and the wider community, God and ancestors is totally destroyed. Hmm. Even the relationship between the individual and the physical environment suffers. Yes. Because of this, misfortunes such as illness, poverty, barrenness, war and so on can occur and even death. Whew. Now I am done. Good work. I will just fill in a few points that you may have left out. Sure. Both agree that sin and evil may result from failing in a social or spiritual obligation. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve were tested by God when they were told not to eat from the tree of life. And they failed. Traditionally, not respecting the elders, not pouring libations for the ancestors, and such are also seen as failure to fulfill obligations. Understood. Now, there's a point that I expected you to talk about, but you didn't, so I will. Which one? That evil and sin alienate human beings from God. Oh my, how could I forget that very important point? Don't you worry, you mentioned so many good ones already. God originally had good intentions for human beings. They lived in a state of goodness and innocence. This was shattered because of evil 
and sin. I agree. Finally, God is the guardian of morality, law and order. In both cases, there are do's and don'ts spelled out for human beings to follow. God intends everything to be done in an orderly manner. Unfortunately, human beings deviate from these rules and cause God's anger to fall upon them. Oh, something smells good. My dad is a good cook. I'm sure you will love whatever he is preparing. I'm sure I will. Give me a moment. Let me see if he needs any help. Okay. <laughs>